This video is for anyone wanting to start on the right path to becoming a better checkers player. Maybe you've been playing the game on and off for years. Maybe you've only recently picked up the game. It could be that checkers is a hobby and you want to improve. Or maybe you're just curious about what the game has to offer. All that is great, and this video has something to offer all of you. There's one disclaimer. I will show a couple different games at the end of this video, but the purpose here is to focus on the tried and true ways in finding success and improving your playing ability. There will be future videos dedicated to specific lines of play. Whether you're winning all of your games, which is absolutely fantastic, or maybe you're losing some games and that's okay too, you will have the building blocks to work toward greater success in this game. So I'm sure you're thinking now, oh great, it's just reading books and tedious study. Actually, nothing could be further from the truth. I'll show you the real secret, and it works. Now that we've gotten rid of the books, all we're left with is your mind and intuition. That's more than enough to get started. Now you just have to find someone to play against. This can be a little challenging. There are checker apps, websites, and maybe there's a group in your neighborhood. I recommend the website playok.com. It's free and there are always a number of players at all levels, so it's easy to find a game. Also, I like that you can record your games and download them as a PDN file. This is a great feature and it gives you the ability to look back and find moves you like and moves you could have done differently. When playing online, or anywhere for that matter, find and play people that are a little bit above and a little bit below your skill level. Don't play anyone that is way below or way above your level, as this can be discouraging. You will know what I mean when you start playing. So, just play, and play, and play, and play some more. Play for about a year to a year and a half. It doesn't have to be every day, but it should be a regular activity. Play more than 1,000 games. Play with a time control of at least 5 minutes. In playing, you'll learn what works and also what doesn't work. You might get stuck in some positions, and maybe that can be a focus point going forward. When I first started playing, I only played with this formation, regardless of where white moved. When you're not playing, check out the American Checker Federation website and the North Carolina Checker Association website. You can interact with people in their forum and learn about the game's history and see old photos. If you're getting stuck, that's okay. It happens to everyone. There's likely an ending that always gets you into trouble, and you just don't know what to do. I ran into lots of problems, especially this one, with three kings versus two kings in opposite corners. I eventually made a video about it and how to solve it, but I wanted to learn right then and there, and I didn't want to wait. So here's what I did. I bought this book called Starting Out in Checkers by Richard Pask who is a grandmaster from the UK. If you find yourself getting stuck and frustrated, then get this book as it goes over some common pain points beginners face, specifically when it comes to endgame problems. You will have to learn that each square has a certain number associated with it. So moving this piece to this square is called 11 to 15 and is written as such. When you're playing, find a formation that works well for you and keep playing it as long as you continue to have success. You don't have to play the formation that I did every time, but I do highly recommend you play 11-15 every single time. It's the strongest move on the board regardless of where white replies. If you want some variety, you can play here, which is 9-14, or here, which is 11-16 but I really do recommend playing 11-15 every time. What about when you're playing the white pieces? We'll assume your opponent will play 11-15 every time. In my other videos, you can see what the best counter moves are if your opponent doesn't make that move. So what's the best move against 11-15? I think this is really where playing and finding what works best for you will prevail. What I'll say is, stick to these four replies. Here, 22-17, 2218 the single corner exchange, 2318 the cross, and 2319, which can lead to a number of different openings. There is going to come a time 
And maybe that time is now in which you know that you cannot progress any further without some additional information. This is where some study is needed. The next book to get is Lee's Guide. It's an oldie, but a goodie, and you can also find it online. In order to read it, you must memorize the numbers associated with each square. The openings I recommend you study initially are The Cross, Defiance, Glasgow, Old 14th, and Single Corner. Let's go over the Glasgow. I'm going to play through a very popular variation in this opening. This variation has its own name and is called Martin's Rest. It's called that because in the 1863 world title match, Robert Martins used it 21 times against James Wiley. So let's play it. Red starts out 11-15, again the strongest move on the board. Really good formation from Red. And this is the move that defines the Glasgow. White moves here to go up one piece initially. It doesn't matter which capture red makes. Let's capture this one first. And now white is up a piece. Red moves here to take it back. Pitching here is a little bit weaker, so the best move is actually to follow up here. And now red has a choice of three different moves here. Red can go here, here, or this move, which is the Martin's Rest line. White actually has to pitch a piece in order to draw here. Look at the center for red. It's very powerful. So red takes that power away a little bit by pitching this move. And then capturing this key square. This is one variation, but let's play the, Martin, the Martin's Rest line. White takes the piece back. Red takes this piece. White pushes up here again. And now red goes here. White captures the piece. Red starts to go in for a king. Red has to continue to go for a king. Red cannot go here, or else you fall into the two for one. Red gets the king. White goes here. Exchanges. And finally, here for a clean cut draw. A very classical game in checkers, and one to know. Let's go over one more opening you will encounter a lot. The single corner is one of the most popular openings in checkers. The possibilities are endless here. I'll go over one of my favorite variations, which also happens to be very restrictive in nature. So this is the opening. Red goes 11-15, and white counters 22-18, the exchange. Always jump to the center here. The side jump is inferior. So typically here, red can make this move, 12-16, or 8-11. You'll find both a lot. I prefer 12-16, as it can play into a very strong formation here for red, if white goes here next. This is the Flora Temple line, very strong for red. Instead, after 1216, 
White plays this move. This is the most restrictive move on the board. And having a restrictive style is something I recommend. You want to force red to move where you want them to move. So we do the double capture here. And white has secured uh, this center square for the time being. White will have to watch out because there is some vulnerability, but it's sound. Red will try to run it off. This is the follow-up. White is going to take it back next, so red follows up here. Red cannot continue to move off, so this is the best move. White goes here with the intent of capturing a center square. Red does not advance here, instead red goes here, thinking that they're going to do have a two for two. White prevents that by moving here next. Red goes into this square. White captures this center square. And now red plays for a little trap. If white goes here next, red can pitch here. And then the white piece is on this square. And then pitch again here for a triple jump. But white doesn't go here, instead white goes here, captures on the side, and now red will play for another trap by moving here. Now if white goes to this square or this square, red can pitch a piece here, white will capture, red will pitch another piece here, another capture, and then go for a triple jump. But White has other things in mind. Instead, white pitches a piece and then plays for its own two for two. Back on this center square. Red looks a little powerful here, but it's all sound. Red starts marching towards the king row. White goes here. Again, continuing the march. Now here, White actually allows red to just continue on in. This is the best move, and it actually allows white to break up this mess down here. So red's going to continue to do that. White goes here. And now, white can exchange this piece off here. Red has the king, but white will too after exchanging this piece. And this is a solid draw. One of many, many, many variations here. I hope this video lays some good foundation, and I'd love to hear your feedback on your progress. If you'd like to share your games, I'd be happy to feature and analyze them in a video. Thank you, as always, for watching.